Hello and welcome to my F120 driver grammar driving for Aston Martin here today for the Monaco Grand Prix coming off the back of a pretty frustrating race in Imola last time out now it's been a little while since that last video because of the F1 manager videos I've been making but anyway we're back with F122 as we cross the line now to start first lap in Q1 in qualifying in short qualifying I should say where this weekend I see as an opportunity to finally get some points on the board hopefully but we decided to go again because that first lap was terrible we actually set a purple middle sector on that lap but still not that good as we make a big clock up on our final run and around the final corner and up to the line being pushed round by by someone behind us and cross the line and it's going to be P19 for the race this is going to be a long one let's get into it a proper road race and in the true meaning of the word that's how Mr Monaco the late great Graham Hill once described this iconic event the cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century but we still race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean there is no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix the prestigious Circuit de Monaco then is not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago it's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Sainz, Sonoda, Daniel Ricciardo, and Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Verstappen, Norris, and Lance Stroll. Latifi, Magnussen, Mick Schumacher, and Perez. Schwartzman, Albert, Pierre Gasly, and Brown. Joe and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. So with Monaco being a hard track to overtake on, I thought we've got nothing to lose. So we're going to start on the softs. Hopefully we have the pace to get a good start, maybe send it and then, yeah, if the tyres go off it doesn't matter because it's Monaco. But anyway, the five lights are out and we're underway, it's George heading the field then. We're down into time one, we're looking for a good start now. But we find ourselves boxed in on the outside. That's not what we want. But we've gained two places. Anyway, we're side by side there with the Alpha Tauri as we climb up the hill towards the casino, round the casino. Did we gain that place? We try and push the Alpha Tauri wide. Yes, we do. And now we're going for our classic Mirabeau dive bomb. But the Williams tried to follow us there. And now we're briefly free wide. And now. We've been pushed to the outside, which is not good because I really wanted just to send it down the inside. But we've managed to get around the outside of Perez in his Red Bull, and that's pretty decent if I do say so myself. But it's not ideal though. We've got Magnus in ahead, then it's Latifi, and we've got from P19 up to P14 as we've in a pretty different line through the chicane and we go round the outside of Kevin Magnus in the classic move that I used to do all the time back on F1 2019 and now we can get after Latifi or I thought that because these soft tyres went off so quickly even Monaco couldn't save me as that was very wide 
by Magnussen and now he's coming under pressure from Perez. Perez doesn't want to really be here as we skip on to lap 7 as going down into and he locks up Magnussen. Magnussen locks up. It looks like there's nearly contact with him and Perez and Perez is through. And that's given us some proofing space but these soft tyres, my logic made sense in my head in practice on paper it looked good as well in practice though not very clever as the tyres have gone and there's Perez down our inside into Mirabai gets the position on us tried to hold it around the outside but it just went a little bit wider making it so I couldn't turn into the corner and Perez is through and you can see the gap out in front we couldn't catch the TV there 15 seconds at the road as now we battle with Kevin Magnussen and nearly contact there almost contact and now heading up the hill towards the casino and we get done by Magnussen and now maybe maybe Albon as Jeff sorry Mark tells us as there's a big luck there for Albon that we have lost one of the gears so that isn't helping our pace either although along with a car that out oh, that um, there was like a boat and tires that are as dead as a dodo as well everything could it could it be worse at this current moment of the Grand Prix as we send it back down the inside of the Alfa Romeo and Schwarzman but now this mechanical issue isn't helping us one bit but as we skip all the way on to lap 10 the tyres were gone of course and we're going to go on to the hard tyres and hopefully we can make these work because those on the mediums out in front they will have fresher tyres at the end but hopefully we can gain some time on them through through pitting early we're in clean air and let's just see what we can do as we go all the way on now to lap 19 the gears had sorted themselves out as we come out ahead then of Robert Schwartzman by some distance as well which is good and also Pierre Gasly and the Alf and Ocon in the other Alfa oh yes we have a big wobble big moment there on the exit of the final corner not ideal at all heading down though Robert Schwartzman gets us down the inside we cut him back just go a little bit over the curb we didn't cut it too much only the entire thing but on the hard tyre, I think we can safely call this rock bottom as now on lap 24 we are being lapped by the leaders as, as the Ferrari there of Leclerc has overtaken George and I'm trying to get out the way but George just won't overtake me going through the final corner he's lost time and now behind the Ferrari of Sainz I'm trying to let him through but he won't overtake me and now I'm at risk of getting a penalty for ignoring blue flags when I'm not, I'm trying to let him through but he won't overtake me, he's just following me but now through Mirabeau, finally I pull out the way but he won't overtake me and I've had to pretty much stop on the track and now the Alfa Romeo of Joe, of Guan Yu Joe has overtaken us because of science. I literally couldn't go any slower. You saw me there going into the heaven. I'd stopped on the track and he still wouldn't overtake me. He's lost time as we have to dive bomb Joe to re overtake him. We haven't got the job done. He looks like he's got the grip. But we do our trademark move in Monaco and we do stay ahead then of of Joe as now yet again we can be in a lap more and more as we've managed to pull out that capture because of the sheer amount of lap cars we had no pace I think we must have had some sort of wing damage these are always one of those races as we have a big wobble there on lap 28 and now we're almost wide with many many cars wide into turn one we've been spun round 
We've been tapped from the rear from the Alfa Romeo and we're facing the wrong way. Looking at the apex of turn one, we have to spin the car back round. And there's Ocon stopped. And that's not ideal. We've been spun round here in Monaco at turn one drama late on. We have we had very bruised elbows. Very bruised elbows after trying to defend and it's all been for nothing because the Alfa Romeo has tapped us round not ideal and now we're all the way down at the back ahead of Schwartzman who was the one who tapped us back and this though is Gasly he's had a massive engine failure going through the tunnel smoke everywhere and that is not ideal for the Frenchman as his engine goes pop with just nine laps to go of the Monaco Grand Prix. Now on to lap 37 now. And we're still battling for a position. You can see that there's Perez ahead. Yeah, we were racing earlier in the race. This is good. But it's our final lap. George Russell has won the Monaco Grand Prix. Great for him. But we are going to come home for a shocking result. Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. That's it then for another nail-biting Monaco Grand Prix. We were on the edge of our seats the whole time, but they've come through to take a stunning victory. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. I think we can call that rock bottom. I said the car was ru rubbish in Imola last time out. I've got drama of the day somehow. I don't know how. Don't know what Anthony Davis is doing that race. We're still being beaten by Stroll in the championship. We still yet to get a point. I thought this was the race where we could have kicked on and got some momentum. Because Monaco's always kind of been kind to us. But no, I think we can call this rock bottom now. This car is dreadful. I think championship from Alpine may have not been the best idea. You can see the championships here. Two points in the constructors as well. Isn't ideal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.